Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Pharmacy Tech Love. This is where you're learning everything that you need to know about how to be a pharmacy technician. Hey, just wanna show support to Curvaceous Glam Boutique. Here you will find maxi dresses, shorts, regular dresses, sundresses, everything that you need for the more curvaceous body. Uh, it is giving very much colorful. It is giving very much summer. There are some fall dresses as well, but it is giving definitely body body. So take a look at these prices. There are some on sale. There are actually something like $8. So ladies, grab these gems while they are on sale. I love t-shirt dresses. So I always look for t-shirt dresses. Those shorts are cute. Also, I love colorful dresses as well. So make sure you check out her website. I will leave it in the description and I will also pin it in the comments just for you. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Pharmacy Tech Love. And if this is your first time visiting my channel, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell. That way you get all my notifications. Okay, now listen. If you are a new pharmacy technician, not certified yet, just an aspiring pharmacy te technician, and you may be a pharmacy technician trainee, and you find yourself having a little bit of trouble understanding your teacher, and you're just not getting everything, make sure you go to the website DenaliRx.com. Make sure you use my discount code Pharmacy Tech Love. If you cannot remember just what I said, it's in the description, okay? All right, so I just wanted to let you guys know that. And if you're new to my channel, I'm Pharmacy Tech Love. I talk everything about pharmacy technicians, from the math, brands and generics, um, allegations, concentrations, uh, what based terminology, I need to do a video on terminology, um, sick codes, whatever you need. And most of the time uh, in the comment section, uh, you guys will give me ideas on videos that you personally need. This one today is from Chaos A. Chaos A requested this video. So this is the main reason I'm creating this video. And this seems actually to be the hardest thing for individuals to learn uh, in my class whenever I teach. Um, Another thing, make sure you support um, Curvaceous Girls. I think that was the name of it. Um, it was called, it's, it's one of my friend's website and it's called Curvaceous and Curvaceous Boutique. So make sure you check that out. It was in the clip right before you see me now. So make sure you check her out and let's get into the video because this is kind of a doozy for a lot of people. So let's go. Okay, let's talk about this, all right? So as, as I was saying, this is concentration and dilutions. Basically what this is, you may have two different ingredients of something in your pharmacy. Let's say you have, um, I don't know, you have a 5% of a orange juice and you have a 10% uh, of an orange juice, okay? Um, but what you're trying to make is a 7%, okay? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to, to get those two different percentages in order to make one. But but it's not gonna be it, it, it's it's not gonna be like that. It, it may, well, yeah, it can be like that actually. So I'll I'll show you exactly how to do this, okay? All right, and sometimes, and it's gonna be the same way every single time. And in this, in this problem, you are going to need three numbers because in the end, you have to you have to work this problem out as a cross cross multiplication, okay? Cross, excuse me, cross multiply and divide. So you're going to need at least at least three out of four of these numbers to fit in here in order to be able to cross multiply and divide, okay? All right, so let's just talk about what exactly this means. This Q1, Q2, C2, and C1. All right, so this is the formula. So this is the part that you need to memorize, okay? And this is exactly how it's set up. So Q1, right here, that's going to be our initial quantity or volume. Of course, you know that initial means starting, okay? So that's going to be our starting quantity or volume. So if it's the starting quantity or volume, this is what we're gonna have on the shelf because this is what we're starting with, okay? You walk over to the shelf 
and you grab the quantity that you're needing, that is your starting quantity, okay? That is Q1. Q2, that's why I said number two here. This is what you're going to try to make for the patient when they walk out of the door with this product. So we'll just say we're in a compounding pharmacy because as you know, in a compounding pharmacy, you have to mix and you have to make things and the, and the patient leaves out of, out of the door with, with whatever you may, um, considering that you've read the recipe and your pharmacist has checked off on it, okay? Very important. As I was saying, Q1, Q, excuse me, Q2 is gonna be your final or desired quantity or volume. When I say volume, I'm always going to be discussing a liquid, okay? All right, let's go on to C1. C1 is always going to be your initial concentration. Remember how I was talking about that 5% orange juice and that 7% orange juice? That percent is your concentration. So, the per, so your concentration will be five and seven, okay? So your C1 is your initial concentration expressed as a percent, and this is normally the stock solution. So just like you went to the shelf and, and gathered that first quantity, on that quantity, okay, just like you're going to the store and you buy a gallon of milk, it says 2% milk, okay, and, and it's a gallon of milk. So the, the quantity, or the, excuse me, the volume is one gallon, okay, and the concentration is 2%. Everybody with me? 2% gallon of milk, okay? You have your C1, which is the concentration, which is 2%, and you have your quantity, which is a gallon. All right, okay, all right. So C2 is going to be your final or desired concentration expressed as a percentage, and this is gonna be your final solution. So C2 is going to be whatever you've made for that, for that patient. Say for instance, you made them um, clotrimazole, we'll, uh, antifungal medication, and whenever they leave, we'll just say it was one gram, so that's your, that's your quantity. And we'll just say it was a 3% a, a clotrimazole. That 3% is their final or desired concentration because just think of it like this. These tubes are what the patient is going to be actually leaving out of the door with. Okay, They're, And remember, we're, we're just using an example of a compounding pharmacy. So whatever you make that patient and they're leaving out of the door with it, these are going to be the final products, okay? All right, so now let's get into working one of these problems. I only did five of these because they are very lengthy. So pay attention and rewind it if you need to, okay? All right. Okay, on this one, I just found this online, this question online, and I may have uh, changed some things up, I can't remember. Okay, for this one, I had to do some research on what a mole is. And I, I did actually an ex extensive amount of research because I've never worked with a mole before. And what a mole is, it, which, which this, this doesn't even matter, but I still just want to tell you what it is. Okay, so one mole is equal to 6.022 tenths to the 23rd power of particles that are inside of the item. So it's 10th to the 23rd power. Um, so that's pretty much it. So you can do your research on what a mole is, but I've never, I've never worked with a mole as a pharmacy technician. All right, let's get into this problem because we have five more. We have five more. So this is number one. All right, now let's think about this. If 240 milliliters of water, okay, is added to 13 milliliters, you know what, let me get this green marker because I want to make sure that y'all understand this, and I hope this green marker actually works. It looks like my daughter has been chewing on this. Oh, oh my! No, I bet that was my dog. My daughter used to um, she used to chew on stuff. She was a chewer when she was young. She just she just was. Okay, all right. So hopefully this blue one will work. All right. So let me underline this because I need you to I need you to understand this. Hopefully, yeah, this one works. All right, yeah, yeah, let's do that. And okay, and we're just gonna go ahead and underline that too. Okay. So now, let's start again. So if 240 milliliters of water is added to 13 milliliters of 5.0 moles uh, sodium chloride solution. So, so the reason why I underline this is because this is what's on your shelf, all right? 
This this is your actual product that's sitting this on your shelf. This is a solution. So I'm just gonna draw a square and we'll just act as though this is a container, okay? So this is a container sitting on your shelf and in this container, there's 5.0 moles and the quantity or the volume, excuse me, is 13 milliliters of this product that's sitting on your shelf, okay? All right, so I wanna make sure that you understand that. Now, let's go ahead and set up our grid. Which that's it right there. All right, so now we need to start plugging everything in. The starting quantity, the final quantity, the starting concentration, and the final concentration. But let's finish reading the problem. If 240 milliliters of water is added to this solution, what is the concentration of the diluent solution, okay? The, we already have, we already have an initial concentration, which this is our concentration right here. Okay, maybe some of you don't understand what a concentration is. But when you have a medication, and most of the time on your medication bottles, it will tell you what the concentration is. On, on that medicine bottle, it'll have it just like this 5.0 moles in 13 milliliters. That's what it'll say on the side of your container. Just say you have um, Pepsi, famotidine. I think it's two milligrams in one milliliter. And that'll say it on the side of the bottle. So pay, start looking at your bottles while you're at work and get familiar with, with what you're working with, okay? All right, so now the final question is, what is the concentration of the diluent. So we'll leave that last. Let's just work on what we have. So we know that this, this starting item that's on the shelf, remember, Q1 and C1 is our starting, our initial product, okay? This is normally our stop solution, all right? Okay, so now, C1, concentration number one, our stock solution is going to be 5.0 moles. You can put the M if you want to. I normally don't because we're just going to uh, multiply and divide. Okay, and we also have a starting quantity, which is 13 milliliters. However, however, it did say that we're going to add 250 mil, excuse me, 240 milliliters of water is added to that 13 milliliters. So we have to add that together, okay? So once we add that together, okay, once we add, that's going to be our final so that'll be Q2, which is 253. But our starting quantity, remember this is our stock solution. And whatever our stock solution is, we have to put that as our initial, our starting point, okay? So we have our concentration number one, which is 5.0 moles. We have our starting quantity, which is 13 milliliters. And you can, you can add the milliliters, you can add the, um, the units in there if you want to. So now we need to cross multiply. Everyone at this point should know how to cross multiply and divide. If you don't, watch some YouTube videos, okay? But I'm gonna show you briefly. So we're gonna cross multiply this. You're gonna put that in your calculator and you're not going to hit equal, all right? So multiply 13 times five, and go straight into your division key, divide by 253, and that should give you 0 0.256, okay? 0 0.256. Now, is that 0 0.256 what? What is that? Moles, milliliters, what is that? It's going to be moles. Okay, all right, let's work on another one. Let's work on another one. The reason why this one is moles is because this is your final concentration, okay? It's not going to be milliliters because a concentration is not a quantity or a volume. It is expressed as a percentage or it can be expressed as a concentration. And that's exactly what this is, is a concentration. That was our starting concentration right here, okay? All right, let's get into another one. Don't, don't stress, let's just get into another one. All right, let's discuss this one. 
Okay, this one says, how much, I've already underlined this portion. How much of a 12% solution, okay, will you need to produce 150 milliliters of a 6% solution, okay? So let me break this down for you. So the word produce means, you know, to make, if you, if you produce a child and you've made a child, okay? If you go to a party and you, and you produce a cake, that means that you baked that cake or, well, or, or someone has baked that cake, okay? All right, so let's, let's try to figure out where our starting point is, okay? So it says, how much of a 12% solution will you need, okay, in order to make something or in order to produce this? So what we're trying to produce is 150 milliliters of a 6% solution. That's what we're trying to make. So that means whenever this patient in this compounding pharmacy leaves out of that pharmacy, this is what they're going to have in their bag because you you produced this for them, okay? But now we need to figure out how did we make this, okay? There has to be a starting point of how we how we how we began to make this, okay? We didn't just pull this out of thin air and who here you go. Mm -mm, that's not how it works. Okay, so let's let's fill in what we know because if we're trying to produce this and we're trying to let the patient leave out of, out of the pharmacy with this, then we know that this is going to in, involve the twos because remember the twos are the final product. So we have a quantity, a final quantity, which will be 150 milliliters. We have a final concentration. Remember the twos is what the patient is leaving with. We have a final concentration, which is going to be 6%. All right, there we go. Now, now we need to figure out our concentration number one, how all this, how all this got started. What product did we use? Now it says how much of a 12% solution will you need? Okay, so this 12% solution has to be sitting on our shelf because we need it in order to make this, okay? We need it. We need to know how much of this because it does say that. It says how much of a 12% solution, how much of this 12% solution do we need in order to produce this, okay? So this is our starting concentration. We have no idea how much of this we'll need. Not yet. We have no idea how much of that we'll need. So that's our starting concentration. So that's going to be C1. Now, if you will cross multiply and divide, you can only cross multiply two things. The only, thing, the only two things that are actually crossable. So you're going to multiply 6 and 150. And you are not going to hit your equal sign or your enter key, whatever you're working on. You're going to multiply 150 times 6 and go straight into your division key and divide that by 12. And that's going to tell us how much, and it's going to be a quantity, it's going to tell us how much of this solution we need in order to produce this. All right, normally I'll pause it for my students in class. So you can pause it and get your answer, whatever you decide to do. So we're going to need 75 milliliters of that 12% solution. If you got 75 milliliters, then you are on your way. And the reason why we chose milliliters is because this is a dead giveaway, a solution. A solution is normally a liquid, okay? All right, all right. Okay, um, let's go to number three. Okay, all right, let's work this one out. This one says, this one says, this one says, everybody's still with me, everybody's still hanging on, don't give up. Don't give up, we're gonna work out one more and then I'm going to just make up a random one for the fifth one, just something that I normally use in class. Um, I don't know why I do it, but it kind of, it kind of you know, breaks everything down. That, that way you can kind of see it a little bit more clearer, hopefully, okay? All right, so now we have, peroxide 1% solution and we have four ounces of it, okay? Now, you see this right here? That means that this is our prescription. That's what that Rx means. This, this is an actual prescription. So that means the doctor is needing to give this patient peroxide 1% solution 
and they need four ounces of it, okay? All right, so let's come over here to the side. So we have a 1%, we're gonna draw our little, this is what the patient is gonna be leaving out of the um, compounding uh, pharmacy with. So they're gonna be leaving out with a 1% solution and they need four ounces of it. We know that 30 milliliters equals one ounce. So if we multiply everything times four, because we need four ounces, how many milliliters will that give us? Ooh, I hope you can see that. Hold on, let me see if you can. Uh, 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 yeah, okay. So that means you need 120 milliliters. Okay, so now that's what the patient is going to be leaving out. Or you can leave it as four ounces. I like to I like to break everything down as you should, okay? As you should. Break everything down to the smallest unit as possible. Alrighty then. So now we need to get everything set up here. Now we know that the patient is going to be leaving your pharmacy with, with this concentration and this quantity. So that's going to be in our twos, right? Because this is going to be the final product, right? Okay. All right, so the quantity number two, what they're leaving out with is 120 milliliters. I really hope y'all can see this down here. Uh, the concentration that they're leaving out with is 1%. Now, there's gotta be a little bit more information in here. Yes, there is. Okay, so let's start again because we just worked the top. We All we've worked is the first sentence. Uh, peroxide, which is the prescription. Peroxide 1% solution, they need four ounces of it but you have a stock solution of peroxide 50%, okay? How much of this stock solution is required to prepare this order, okay? So whatever we, what our ending amount, we don't know just yet, but we do know how much we started out with. That's just like saying this right here. You have a 50% stock solution sitting on the shelf. We have no idea how much of that you need to make this 1%. Because what, what we're needing to do, that's why it's called concentration and dilutions, okay? Because you're going to need something, whatever product that's required in order to dilute this down, okay? With whatever product you need. But for this one, you're going to need, oh, well, I'm not going to say that just yet. Well, for this one, you're going, you're trying to figure out how, how many, I don't want to say that either. You're trying to figure out how much of this 50% you'll need in order to make this product. Okay. That's what we're trying to figure out right now. I don't know what we're, what, they, what, you know, a person would dilute this with. It could be water. It could be sodium chloride. Who knows? Right now, we're just trying to figure out how much of this stock solution we need in order to make this a 1% 120 milliliters, okay? All right, so now, this is our starting product, our initial product. So we know that that 50% is going to be concentration number one. And you know what you need to do from here in order to figure out how many milliliters of this 50% solution you need in order to make the 1% 120 milliliters. And I'll let you figure that out because I don't want to show you how to cross multiply and divide again. I want you to, to, to be able to do that. All right, it is 2.4 milliliters. That's how much of this stock solution. Hopefully everyone understands me when I say stock solution. That's what's sitting on your shelf in the pharmacy, okay? That's, that's what you're starting out with in order to make this product for the patient, okay? All right, let's carry on to the next one. Okay, I kept this one kind of simple for you as well, okay? This one says, how much of a 6% solution can you make by diluting 500 milliliters of a 20% solution, okay? So we're trying to make something. So if we're trying to make something, that means we're trying to make it for the patient, of course, okay? So we're trying to make this for the patient. We're trying to make a 6% solution. We have no idea 
how many milliliters we need. Okay, so if this is what we're trying to make, then, then the other thing, the other item has to be what we have on the shelf. So I'm just gonna put SS for stock solution. Now, we're gonna be diluting 500 milliliters of a 20% solution. So we have a 20% solution. And how much of it do we have? You said 500 milliliters, great. We have 500 milliliters of that stock solution. That's what that SS stands for. So let's go ahead and plug in what we got, okay? So now, let's start with this right here because that's what we're trying to make. So if we're trying to make this, we know that this belongs in the two family, the number two family, meaning Q2, C2. So this is our concentration of what we're trying to make. So that's going to be C2. This is our stock solution. So this is our initial quantity and volume, meaning starting. So this 20% is the concentration, which is C1, which is gonna go right here. This is our starting volume, which is going to be Q1, which will be right here. And you know what to do from there. You know what to do. You have your percentages on this side. You have your quantity on this side. And we're working with milliliters, so you know what your answer is gonna be. I'll give everyone a second. And you can pause it, you can pause it. Okay, so your answer is going to be 1,666.66 milliliters. You got that? Give yourself a pat on the back. These, these are not easy. You know, it takes, a, it takes a lot of thought. The most important part is, you know, knowing the formula, you know, the Q1, Q2, C2, C1. But, 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 you have to know what they mean, okay? And I, and I have tried to go over that over and over and over so you could get it. Okay, let's work out one last one. All right, this is our last one. Okay, <clears throat> this one says, even though, you know, milk doesn't come in a 10%, so, you know, this is just hypothetically speaking. Okay, how much of a 10% milk will you need to produce 120 milliliters of a 7% milk? So basically what you have on your shelf, on your shelf is a 10% milk, okay? But we don't need a 10% milk. That's not what we're trying to give the patient. We're trying to give the patient a 7% milk. And we need to know how much of this 10% milk can we use in order to make it into a 7% milk? That's our goal. Everybody with me? Kind of breaking it down a little bit? All right, so what are we starting with on our shelf? What's our, what's our stock solution? 10%, right. And we have no idea how much of that stock solution we're going to need in order to make this 120 milliliters of a 7% milk. We have no idea. So we have no idea. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, what we're trying to make for the patient is a 7% milk and we're trying to produce 120 milliliters of it. All right, I think you guys should have this by now. It doesn't matter whatever you wanna put in first. Uh, let's start with the most information that we have, which are the, the final items, which is the Q2 and the C2. We have our final concentration, which is 7%. Like I said, you don't have to put these units in here, the percent and milliliters. You don't have because this is all going to be multi cross multiplication, cross multiplication and division. Okay, all right. Q two, which is our final volume, which is one hundred and twenty milliliters. Okay, and we also need to do something with this ten percent milk because this is our stock solution. So that's our initial or starting point. Okay, so that's going to be concentration number one, which is at ten percent. And we need to find out how many milliliters of that we need. So I'll let you cross multiply and divide and get your answer, please. And thank you. Oh man. I'm trying to think of anything that's been going on lately. Um, I actually like the job I have now. I, I'm at home still. Um, they just called me out of the blue and I was, it, I mean, it's a blessing. It really is that, that I still work at home. So my main thing right now is getting me a puppy. Okay, I'm sure you've crossed multiplied and divided there. If you were having trouble cross, cross multiplying and dividing, you're going to cross multiply these two numbers here, the only items that you can cross multiply. Because if you try to cross multiply here, what are you going to multiply? Okay. 
All right, so 120 times 7 goes straight into your division key divided by 10, which is going to give you 84 milliliters. Okay? All right, that's all I have for you this evening. Uh, I believe that was five problems, I believe. And I'm going to make a video soon, just, just kind of chatting it up with you guys just to get caught up because I have been MIA for like three months. It's like when I don't teach, I don't, I don't, I don't want to teach, you know, here, but I shouldn't be like that because this is a passion for me. But I guess, you know, it, I just kind of get in a funk. But so far, I have two students that have signed up for the fall semester. I have to have four students in order to make the class. So I'm hoping I have two more students that sign up. I have been promoting and promoting and promoting. I'm sure you guys have clicked off by now. But anywho, I will talk to y'all later. Bye.